Hey, it's Saturday. Welcome back to Woodworking with Wes. We have a very fun project today. It's a little more detailed than ones we've done in the past, but if you follow along, I'm going to show you step by step how to build a really cool piece of furniture for your home. Something that you'll enjoy and so will your family. What we're going to build is a very contemporary style bookcase. Now, I made the drawings like my crude drawings, but I want to show you. Our bookcase is going to be five shelves. It's going to have two ladder type effects. This is our ladder, but we're going to go over this in a minute. And then it's going to have some shelves that are going to go through. It's not going to be a traditional type style bookcase with solid ends. This is going to be very contemporary, very cool. Our upright pieces here are going to, this is the side view of your upright piece. This is all going to be out of three quarter inch oak. So you are looking at the end grain of your three quarter inch oak. It's going to be 67 inches tall. It's going to be 11 and three quarter inches wide. It's going to have five shelves that go through and we're going to dado our three quarter inch piece just an eighth of an inch deep for our cross pieces. And so it, our little data is going to look just like this. We've listed the sizes of the pieces that we need. We're one and seven eighths inches wide by three quarters of an inch thick. And so we've listed our parts. Now, one of the things I want to clarify here, you'll see it says 67 and then in parentheses, 68 and a half. We're 67 inches to the top. But if you notice down here at the bottom on my print, I have an inch and a half space Un, uh, underneath the bottom cross piece. My other cross pieces are all equally spaced from the end. So I extended my uprights an inch and a half up here so that I can make my cuts back and forth on the saw. And I'll show you how we're doing that. But this is going to give us consistency as we put our piece together as we do our dados. And then we're going to cut that little inch and a half ear off when we put it together. So. First thing let's do, we have milled some red oak uh, down to three quarters of an inch. Our ladder effect side pieces are going to be out of red oak. Our shelves are actually, when we've listed our shelves over here, our shelves are actually going to be out of seven eighths ash. We're going to paint our ladder effect a dark color and our ash shelves are going to be clear. But let's get started by working on our ladder effect. The first thing we're going to get started on is the uprights to our ladder pieces. The piece of oak I have here is wide enough to cut all four. So the fronts and backs of both sides, so it's that wide. I'm going to now cut it to length and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the dado. That's a very important step and I want to show you how easy it is and how you can make it so consistent by doing all of your fronts and backs at the same time. First thing, let's cut it 68 and a half because we're going to be 67 at the end. We'll use our cross cut sled. We'll take just a nibble off of one end to square it up and turn around and make our final cut the other way so that we're nice and square. Okay, all cut to length. Okay, let's bring you up to date where we are. We're getting ready now to cut our 1 8 inch notch in the side of our upright pieces. Now, I went through and I did my spacing. I did my math. I transferred that math onto my board. And I went through and I marked all my spacing. This is where I'll be datoing. On these pieces here, I have my spacing in between for my shelves. And I went through and I checked myself to make sure that my math had been correct by doing it in real size on my board. I have installed on my saw my stack dado head for the thickness of the wood that I had. Now, I cut a little piece off here and I was just a little bit thicker than three quarter and that's just fine. I just wanted to make sure that my stack dado set 
was the thickness of the wood that I'll be dadoing for, and I took care of all of that. I'll now put my push fence in my saw, and when I talked about going back and forth, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting our fence and making one cut and then flipping the board around like this and making the other cut that is exactly the same distance from the end. And we'll be able to do that for the end cut, the first step, the second step, and then the center will just center. So that will make all of our distances exactly right and then we'll be able to cut our strips into uh, our board into the strips that will make our uprights for our ladder. Our first cut, and, and I like I say, I have set my stack dado set so that it's the right depth. I actually took a piece of scrap material and I just kept messing around with it until I got the exact depth that I wanted so that I know how to set up my dado. Our first cut and what I'll be able to do in order to, to set my fence, I'll be able to set my fence and push my piece across. Because I have marked this, I'll be able to put my tape measure on here and set my fence based upon where my blade is for my dado set. And then all my cuts will be right where they're supposed to be. And then like I say, flip it around and around so that my cuts are consistent top to bottom. We now have our board all dado. You can see where we've done it right along with our corresponding lines that we marked. Now remember we were going to cut off the little top piece and that's what we're going to do now. We've reinstalled our single blade and we're going to just put our saw sled in here. Put our glasses on so we can see. And we're just going to take that top piece off. Now, with our board at this point, we can cut it into the inch and seven eighths strips that we need to make the front and back of our ladder. But before I do that, I have the piece of wood all milled to thickness that will be our cross pieces. This is our board right here that will be our cross pieces. According to our plan, our cross pieces are going to be nine and seven eighths plus the width of the two dados on each side. So they're gonna be about 10 and 1 eighth inch because the dado is an eighth of an inch deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chunk me off a bunch of pieces here. There'll be seven pieces on each side. So I need a total of 14 pieces, 10 and 1 eighth, and by the same width as our front and back pieces. So I wanna cut my front and back pieces and all my cross pieces at the same time so that I'm consistent in my width. And I'm gonna cut them a little long so that I can trim them to fit once I get them all done. All right, I've taken our board with all the dados and I've ripped it in half so that we can get an exact measurement of how much longer than nine and seven eighths we need to make our cross pieces. We think they're going to be 10 and an eighth, and this should be a quarter of an inch if they are going to be 10 and an eighth, and it is just 10 and, see, it's a, yes, it's a quarter of an inch, just like we planned. So that's what we'll do. We'll now cut all of our cross pieces to 10 and a quarter. I have my saw sled set up, and I have a slide block set here 
we'll square these up by trimming one end and cutting the other end to 10 and 1 8. With our pieces cut to length, you can now see how we're going to start putting this together. These pieces will all fit in here like this. Now all of this is double wide. So just so you remember, this is two thicknesses wide. So this all goes together like this, then there'll be another piece across, but it will only be an inch and seven eighths wide. So we have one, two, one, two, and then one, two, one, two. So that's what we're gonna do next. I will cut all of this into inch and a seven eighths wide, and then we'll come back and assemble. Before we split this into our inch and seven eighths widths, I wanna go ahead and sand all of my pieces and it's easier to sand when it's a little wider and so we're going to go through and we're going to sand everything we've got an 80 grit sanding pad on our sander we're going to sand it to 80 grit and then we're just going to polish it up a little bit to 120 before we go any further i want to show you a little something i did i put a bunch of cross marks on here i just took my pencil and i just went across like this by sanding those marks away, it's easier to see that I'm done sanding. It's not really that there's anything that I needed to indicate by putting the marks other than the fact that I'm just trying to make my sanding easier to be able to see when I'm done and when I'm not. And you can see when the pencil marks are all gone, I'm all sanded. With all of our pieces sanded, we're now ready to get ready to cut into the inch and seven eighths individual pieces. And so we have our saw set. We'll turn on our dust collector and cut everything in half. And we're gonna do it all at once so that all of our pieces are consistent in their width. For the last few minutes, I have spent putting pocket holes in the ends of all of my cross pieces, except for two, and I'll show you that in just a minute. What I'm going to end up doing now is I'm going to end up putting my cross pieces on my uprights like this. This is going to be the way they'll be attached. We'll glue the pocket screw these cross pieces like this. Now we'll come back when I get one side put together and show you how that all looks. All right, we have one of our ladder sections done. You can see how it goes together and you can see how tall our bookcase is gonna be. There'll be a shelf on each one of these levels, but let's show you how it goes together. We've, you've watched us do all the parts, now let's put it together. We're going to be installing our cross pieces now. They fit inside the little dado that we made and we'll pocket screw them in and we'll put it together just like we showed you in a ladder type effect. So let's show you how that works. We put a little glue on the end and you don't need much. You don't want any squeeze out. Your screws are going to be holding it and your glue. And then we just take it and we make sure that we're flush on the outsides. and two pocket screws in each one. And then we just go down the row just like this. Same, 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 same. Little glue inside the dado, flush on both sides. Whoops, sorry, excuse my hands in the way. And then pocket screws. The little dado acts as a, an alignment and a stabilizing force for this little cross piece that we're putting into. Every time we put the little cross piece in there and tighten it down with our screws, it just sucks it right into the bottom of that little dado and it really makes that secure and it will be able to withstand any kind of weight that we might put in our bookcase but it will hold it nice and firm. Okay, we'll finish up with our ladder 
pieces all put together. Waiting for the glue to dry, I put in a squaring block and I clamped it in to make sure that when it dries, it will dry perfectly square. That'll help keep our bookcase level. And just by putting this in, we end up with a better configuration. I did the same thing on the other one. And then when this dries, next step. With our side pieces all put together and dry, the next step will be to sand the outside of everything and then go over all of the outside pieces. We'll go around the inside and down the outside with an eighth inch round over on our handheld trim router. That gives us a nice smooth upright piece. And that is the way we will complete the outside on both sides, front and back. With our upright pieces all sanded and routed now, we're ready for the next step. I'm going to show you what that next step looks like, and then I'm going to show you how I did it. This is the other side all completed with the next step. And what I did is I created a little cross support system to give it some real, real rigid strength that this might not have the way it is. Now, I don't think there would be a problem with this because we glued and screwed it together with pocket screws, but this will just add a little bit, plus it adds a little decoration. But let's go over and show you how I did it. We started off making our pieces, our little cross pieces, out of the same material that we made our frame out of, but we milled it down. First off, we milled our board down to 5 eighths of an inch thick. Then we cut strips and milled those strips down to half inch thick. So we now have a 5 eighths by 1 half inch strip and we made a lot of it. And so what we're going to do, there's four pieces involved in every section. There's the two side pieces and then the two cross pieces. I determined the size of the pieces that I needed to go in here by drawing it out full size. This board is exactly the width of my opening. I took my tri-square and I marked my 45 degree cross pieces. I measured down so I knew how far my supports needed to be. This piece will go like this on the inside of my frame and then the cross pieces will hook to it. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to just nail it on and explain it as I go and then it's times four. Now let's review here. This is where the shelf is going to fit and it's going to fit on the top of each one of these cross pieces and hide my pocket holes. So what I did were one and seven eighths wide. This is five eighths of an inch wide and so it's exactly five eighths times three and I made me a little spacer jig with one of the little scrap pieces, five eighths, and I just nailed it to a little block. That little spacer will fit in there and then we'll take one of my vertical pieces put it in there and we're going to attach it with very little bit of glue and some 23 gauge headless pins. So let's go ahead and put one of those pieces in so you can see it. Three quarter inch 23 gauge headless pins. Actually they're seven eighths. We're going to take our little cross piece here and like I say a very little bit of glue. We don't want any squeeze out on this if we can help it. A little bit is probably going to happen, but we don't want any if we can help it. We put it tied up against our little spacer jig and hold it down. And I just give it four headless pins down each side, just like that. Now to prepare the little stick to get put in there, all I did was after I had cut it to length and it was 11 inches determined by my little drawing, I just took some 150 hand paper. I sanded the two exposed corners. I had some little marks on there to make to tell me what edges I had run through the planer and not. So I sand those off and then I just took my hand paper and broke the bottom edge corner and then that becomes that piece just like that. So you can see by making our little spacer jig, we nail that in there and we'll do that on every piece now all the way up and down on both sides. So it's on this side and we flip it around 
like this. Put our spacer jig back up there like that. Let's go ahead and nail that in so you can see. Again, very light glue. Spacer jig's backwards. Cut our spacer jig like this, and we just put it tied up against that spacer jig. And four headless pins. Just like that. And now we have both center pieces are already in this piece. And like I say, we'll do this all four sections. We're now getting ready to nail in our little cross pieces that go like this. And I just wanted to explain how I did that. What I did is I measured on my little drawing that I did here and determined that my cross pieces were 13 and 7 eighths to long point to short point. So in other words, long point, short point, 13 and 7 eighths. They will fit in here just like this. And there'll be one on this side, then we'll go all the way up and down this side. We'll flip it over and put it on the other side. Before we install them, we'll do just like we did on our piece here. We'll take our piece of hand sandpaper and we'll sand all four corners of this just enough to break that sharp edge. We're not really sanding anything because we already did a really good job in our milling. We have nice smooth uh, pieces with, because we milled it all properly and did it in a way that where they were all consistent. Now we have just the edges broken on this. And we'll put it in like this and here. Now, we will also put this in with our 23 gauge headless pin gun. But I want to put a little glue and I don't want to mess. And so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to put just a tiny little mark on either side. And I'm not going to worry about that mark because we're going to show you how we're going to finish this and that mark's not going to show. But you can see how we show where to put our glue. And we want a drop of glue. Like right that much right there and that much right there. So just a drop of glue. We don't want any squeeze out. And then we take our piece that we've got all sanded. It's tight up in the corner and then tight over against the frame over here. And we just hold it in there tight. One pin. One pin. And we'll now do that all the way up and down on this side and then flip it over and do the other side so that it will create the cross look that we're after. So let's, and I show, I'll show you how I did that on the saw over here with my 45 degree jig, my angle jig. I put a stop block here because I knew my measurements were all going to be the same. And I'll cut this. We cut that angle. Now we want our angles, our, our angles are not going to be like a picture frame, so we have opposing angles. Our angles are going to be the same. So we cut this side, we flip our stick over, and we put it against our stop block here. And so our angle is here, and our angle is here. And there's our piece cut to fit. And we'll do all of them the same way and make our cross pieces. When we come back, I'll show you how we go to our next step. Now, one last thing we need to do before we send this off to be painted is to create a countersink hole from the underneath side. Now, remember, this is where our shelf is going to go. So this is the underneath side. We're going to put a countersink. Let me get around here so you can see. We're going to put a countersink hole here. 
and that is going to allow us to put a screw into our shelf and hold it in place. So we're going to put one on this side like that and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to put one on this side like this. Okay, and we'll do that to every shelf. We'll sand that and then we're ready to go to the paint shop. And I'll, I'll get this done, I'll come back and I'm going to show you how we're going to paint these. With our two side pieces done, we're going to paint them black. Now, I'm just going to go rattle can of black paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Enamel. I went ahead and made a sample piece. This is what we're going to end up with when we get done. This is the exact same material that we're using here, so we're just going to end up with a nice black paint on our uprights. Not something we'll do in the paint shop. I'm not talking about going to the paint shop. I'm just talking about getting ready to paint it. But uh, we're going to paint this. This is going to be a little time consuming because we've got to get into all of the spaces. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But the next step that I want to show you is the shelves. We're ready to now make shelves. We're now getting ready to do the shelves for our bookcase piece. Our shelves will be made out of white ash. I milled this to width by straight lining it and cutting it. And then because our shelves are wider than any one single board, I've glued boards together to create the thickness that I want. You can see my glue line there. And we have, they're all dry now and ready to finish. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send them through the planer and plane them all down to a consistent thickness so that all of my unevenness that was evident in my rough wood will all be taken care of and they'll all be the same thickness. It isn't an exact thickness, it's just however they clean up. Once I have them all cleaned up to thickness, I will rip them to the exact width that I want on my table saw and then I will take my box sled and cut them to the exact length that I want and then they'll be have an eighth inch round over. Let's go to that point. With our sides all done, sanded, ready for our black paint, and our shelves all done, ready for our clear finish, we'll come back and put this together. See you in a minute. We're moving along on our installation. We're getting ready to put in the last two shelves. This stick that I have here is a spacer stick from the front on the inside, from the front of the frame to the front of the shelf. I have a little space there. The shelf slides in from the side like this. We need to check our measurement. We need to be five and one sixteenth of an inch on that side like that and on that side like that and we're just right there. Okay, we pull the shelf forward I brought a little clamp here and I'm putting the little clamp in here to hold that shelf down while I put the screw in. I'm anchoring the shelf with one and a quarter inch grabbers from underneath. Let's see, I'm, uh, I'm on the wrong side here. Okay, hang on. Okay, shelf forward, spacing correct, and our pre-drilled holes that we did. Right there like that. And we'll 
move around to the back side, move our clamp around to the back side. Okay, that side's in. Move over to the other side and do the same thing. And our shelves are going in just like this on both sides, clamping it. Putting the clamp on helps my screws hold where they're supposed to without pushing the shelf out of place. Well, what do you think of our little Saturday project this time? This bookcase is way nice. And I love the way the black paint and the white shelves really make a contrast. This is a nice piece that would be nice in anybody's home. And you can build it in your garage just like I did. And we'll see you next Saturday on Woodworking with Wes.